Slow down, cars are coming fast now So when I walk I always hear her in the background These memories are really all I've known So if I had a genie I would wish to go back home Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston, or a.k.a. The King of Boston, and today we have episode 21 of the Tennessee Titans Connected Career Mode. This is going to be the divisional round of year one in this Connected Careers. We have the 14-2 and Tennessee Titans going up against the 8-8 eight eight Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I know we just played the Jaguars in week 17, and we did beat them, but finishing 8-8 eight eight still allowed them to get in the playoffs. If you saw the episode 20, which was the wild card weekend, I kind of went over some stats, and went over the standings, and you'll see how the Jaguars made it in. It was a pretty weak AFC, to be quite honest. Like, I think the Chargers got in at 7-9 and because they won the AFC West. So, you know, there's some weak teams in. The second-best record was 11-5 by the Jets. So, you know, the Titans look like they might have an easy road to the Super Bowl, although the last time the Jets did play us, they played us pretty tough, and I believe that game was in Tennessee. So they know they can play us pretty tough in, you know, our field because we obviously have home field advantage. But anyway... We are getting it started here. We have the ball. Jake Locker's going to drop back. He's looking. He's looking. He's going to fire deep over the middle. He's going to find Nate Washington. Ball down to the 21-yard line. A huge pickup of 23 yards by the Tennessee Titans. And now we're doing what we do best, run play action. Jake Locker's going to roll out. He's going to find Jared Cook into the end zone for the touchdown. So we go on top 7 and nothing early. Good thing to do. We want to, you know, try to get this young Jaguars team out of the game as early as possible. We don't want to let them hang around if we know we can beat them, which we know we can because we beat them twice this year. But now Chris Johnson's doing some moves, shedding, or not shedding out blocks, but, you know, moving around the tackles. And he's going to pick up a nice game there for the first down. So now first and 10 on the 43-yard line. Locker, locker. Looks, he's going to scramble. He's going to slide in for the first down to pick up 13 yards by Jake Locker. So nice run there. Using his athleticism. Does have like 83 speed, I think. So pretty nice. Now he's going to find Kendall Wright. Kendall Wright's going to do some moves, and he's going to get stopped at the one-yard line. Almost got in there. Kendall Wright was able to beat his man on that little, uh, I don't know what that route's called. I'm not like a football player, but Locker's going to here find Jared Cook once again. But this is going to be out of bounds. That's going to set up a fourth down, and we're going to bring out Rob Baronis. So we're going to go on top 10 to nothing early. As the first quarter draws to an end in just a moment. So we have a nice early lead. The Jaguars, you know, it's definitely still in this, but hopefully we can try to keep them out of it. Jenny is gonna run play action. He's looking deep. He's gonna end up finding Justin Blackman, the rookie out of Ohio, of Oklahoma State, almost at Ohio State, Oklahoma State. So, you know, the Jaguars again some going here, but on third and five, they would be stopped. Jarrell Casey would stop Maurice Jones Drew right there. So that's gonna set up a fourth and six for Josh Scobie. He's gonna come on to attempt this thirty seven yard field goal. It's up and it is good. So, the lead is cut to 7, still on top, but definitely don't, like I said, don't want to let this Jaguars team hold on for too long. So, we're just going to go back to our ground and pound game, giving off to Chris Johnson. Well, you can hardly call it a ground and pound game with Chris Johnson, but you know what I mean. Run run first offense, and so we're, we're going to run play action, which is what, you know, most run first teams do. They set up the play action. We're going to find Jared Cook, who's going to drag his feet in pick up about 11 yards, but now on third and 18, we need a huge pick up here, we see Kenny Britt down the sideline, and Kenny Britt with a nice catch, he had a solid, solid second half after a really quiet first half, but Kenny Britt's really come alive in this offense, I even considered trading him for a while in the offseason, after that slow start he had to the season, but he's really showed up for these last few games and the playoffs, although I wouldn't know past this game, because I actually haven't played, I'm about to go play the divisional round after I record this commentary, but anyway... So, that's going to set up a 4th and 6th for that incomplete pass, Chris Johnson on the drop. So, we're going to bring on Baronis once again. He gets the 25-yard field goal, and it is good. So, 13-3, to Titans on top. Now, our next drive, Owen Schmidt in motion, play action. We're going to find Jared Cook for the first down. Cook, we're really finding him on this play action so far today. That's really how I love to use him when we run this little play action. Then, Cook cuts to the outside, as he does right there. And Cook's going to turn the corner. No, he's not. He's going to get stopped down on the 6-yard line. It looks like a... Jaguars defender is down on the ground injured, but we're just going to toss it to Chris Johnson. Didn't really want to put in Gerhard yet. We were only at like the two or the three yard line. I just wanted to give it to my best player, Chris Johnson, and let him do the rest. And I love running those toss plays when they're in goal line formations because Chris Johnson can use his 99 speed really just to get around linebackers and such. But Locker's going to now find Jared Cook once again, running that same route once again. Just It's so money in this game, especially when you have a good run game like the Tennessee Titans do, and here, we're going to find Chris Johnson, or not Chris Johnson, Nate Washington, he's going to pick up a nice game, now it's fourth and goal in the one, we give it to Chris Johnson once again, 
neglecting to use Toby Gerhardt because I actually believe I used Toby Gerhardt like the first two downs and he could not get it in. So at that point, I was pretty much like, I'm not going to use Gerhardt this game. I'm going to just keep relying on my best player, Chris Johnson. And he gets it in there. So now it's 27 to 3. We've really blown this game open. And it's not even halftime yet. We're still trying to get some more points on the board. Running the two minute drill offense. We find Kendall right there. That's going to set up a first and 10 ball on the 29 yard line. Play action. Locker drops back. He's actually going to get sacked there by the defender of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So it's going to set up a third and 22. We're just going to hand off to Chris Johnson, try to run some clock, make the Jaguars use a timeout, which they do. And this is going to set up a 52 yard field goal by Rob Baronis. And Rob Baronis is money. So that we're going to go up 13 to 3, 30 to 3, just about as halftime approaches. And yep, as halftime passes, we were up 30 to 3. And that first drive for us back on the field for the second half, we're going to just air it out to Nate Washington to completely beat his man, beat his defender. And he's going to get in there for the easy touchdown, as you can see, just you know, kind of dicking around there. I did this, did this in a live stream, so, you know, people were telling me to, you know, just have some fun with it and stuff. But anyway, the Jaguars would get some going on offense here. As you can see, they got the ball in pretty good field position after we punted pretty much from our own end zone. So Justin Blackman's going to pick up the first down there. He's actually got over 100 yards in the day, so it's a really nice game for him so far. And that is just going to be almost intercepted by Zach Dials. Could not quite come up with it. That sets up a fourth and 10 ball on the 34-yard line. So Josh Scobie's out to attempt the 51-yard field goal. And Josh Scobie, another really great kicker in the NFL, is going to kick that one through the uprights. So 37-6, to still pretty much a blowout. Out. the Jaguars probably needed the touchdown there really to keep things going and this was pretty much the dagger for the Jaguars they're going to punt it on 4th and 17 from their own 13 and now Mariani is going to cut go back to the left sideline and he is gone just beating the defenders he's not that fast but he does get in there it was a pretty short return really wasn't anything too special not as special as this one against the Jets but it is his second touchdown of the year on kick returns so you know that was pretty much the dagger 46 to 6 now after I believe we, I don't know if we got a safety or I might have missed the extra point or something. But anyway, we're just going to find Kenny Britt there. And, you know, at this point, the Jaguars are pretty, you know, just feeling out of it. And we're actually going to end up putting in our backups in just a bit, as you can see. Now, second and one, I didn't want to show too many plays from these, you know, drives just because the game's out of hand. You don't need to see, you know, me going up 98-yard drive or something play by play. So I figured I would just kind of cut these highlights down really into the big ones, and then Jared Cook's going to get in for his second touchdown of the game. So at this point, it's like 58-6. to 6. I was dicking around if you're wondering why I kept like missing extra points or whatever, and here you're going to see. I didn't show this drive because this is a meaningless field goal, but I figured I'd at least show the field goal so you guys you know, know how they got an extra three points. But Scobie does come out and kick his third field goal, and they're celebrating like they just tied the game up or something. But that's besides the point. You can see here we've put on our backups, but you know, people in the live stream were telling me to go for uh, 69 points. So you can call me immature, but... I'm sorry, I was I had to please the fans, you know, but whatever. So at this point, we're pretty much just going for 69 points, which is why we're still passing the ball, but we're going to find Kendall right there. Matt Hasselbeck is in the game. We're trying to get him some work, make sure our, you know, offensive starters do not get hurt. I believe we put on our defensive starters, too. We're pretty much we're running the same lineup we did in Week 17, where we played all of our backups, and now Hasselbeck on 3rd and 10 is going to drop back. He's going to end up finding Kendall Wright, who's really just stepping up whenever he starts playing, you know, whenever he gets a lot of balls thrown his way he always ends up catching them making nice plays and Javon Ringer the backup running back who you know we did decide to not re-sign during the middle of the season we're gonna see if we can get a better running back in free agency maybe a cheaper one you know we decided not to re-sign him but he's really shown up these last few games got the uh, receiving touchdown there and then we get pick off Chad Henney and pretty much put in the dagger and here we do go up six I, we already put in the dagger but we go off 69-9 here, and that was pretty much it for the game. I just kneeled it from then on, and we end up winning 69-9. As you can see, Dick Bliss, Coach Dick Bliss, gets the Gatorade bath from Matt Hasselback, and I couldn't catch who the other guy was. It might have been Colin McCarthy. I'm not 100% sure. But you can see there, Titans very happy. Dick Bliss very happy. He knows that business is not finished. We need two more wins to accomplish the ultimate goal, but then we can start celebrating well, you know, who knows if we'll get there or not. You know, I, I'm serious. I haven't played the game yet. So, although, you know, I've won, what, 12 plus 1 is 13 games now? So, you know, it looks like we're the favorite to win the Super Bowl at this point. However, it's, you know, it's not going to be easy, obviously. I've had years where I've gone 16 to 0 in games and, you know, lost in the divisional or the conference championship because the playoffs are a whole different atmosphere. But anyway, we can see the team stats there. We outdid them in every category except, like, red zone percentage, and I think that was it. And you can see Jake Locker's nice day there. Four touchdowns of 400 yards. Chris Johnson with another solid day. 117 yards and 18 carries. 
A lot of receivers with over 100 yards, including Kendall Wright, Justin Blackman, Jared Cook Jr., Nate Washington, and Kenny Britt. And the defensive stats there, as always. But anyway, that is going to wrap up this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. This was out. Peace.